The city of Castleton, North Dakota, prides itself on taking life just a little bit easier. Its downtown quickly gives way to vast fields of farmland. Tucked away, just off the main road, is the Robert Miller Regional Airport, named for one of the most revered pilots ever in North Dakota. But looking at that sign, you might never know who it was named for. Bob's much too modest to take credit. Robert Miller didn't need to grow up to figure out exactly what he wanted to do with his life. I was drawing pictures of airplanes as a small child. Went from my first airplane ride at six. I got to steer the airplane a little bit that day. I decided this is it for the rest of my life. A natural tinkerer and a self-described aviation nut, he busied himself studying aeronautics and flying remote controlled planes and helicopters. Well, he has been a fixture since it was dirt out here. It's in his blood. My dad thought I should be a school teacher. My mother thought I should be whatever I wanted to be. Bob Miller was born to fly. Those wings quickly took Bob to college at North Dakota State University, and then in 1963, into the Air Force. I flew over a thousand combat sorties during my time in the Air Force. We occasionally got bullet holes in the airplane, but I never got any in me. But after his military service, Bob knew where he was needed most, at home. I had two young sons. It was time to do something other than be gone all the time. And for the next three decades, that's exactly what Bob would do came back to Castleton and commuted to a job at Northwest Airlines down in Minneapolis. So during my 30 years of airline, I commuted back and forth from Castleton, North Dakota to Minneapolis. In just 45 years, he would log over 40,000 hours in the air. But even that wasn't quite enough to keep Bob Miller grounded. He kept setting his sights just a little bit higher than everyone else. He's probably contributed more to North Dakota aviation than anybody else that I personally know. That includes chairing the North Dakota Aeronautics Commission for more than a decade and becoming a founding member of the Fargo Air Museum. Each plane represents, you know, a different story. If you look into the history, you look up the tail number of the airplane or maybe the nose art, you know, on the front, you can really learn about, okay, this guy who flew this airplane. Many of those models on display, those are Bob's. He's always a guy who's looking out for other people. He's always looking to see how can he help someone in aviation. Bob is also the chair of the Castleton Regional Airport Authority. They still host meetings on the first Wednesday of every month. There are no two Bobs. He persists in applying himself 100%. He was the instrumental portion in getting the airport built, placed, great promoter of aviation. Just a few decades earlier, the airport was a small patch of grass runway. The mayor, though, had bigger plans for the space, and he knew exactly who to turn to. I became the chairman of the Aeronautics Commission about that same time, and so pulling all these levers, we started uh, this airport. Yeah, I don't think he sleeps much. More than 60 aircraft now call the Castleton Airport home. And when it came time to select a name for the airport, Castleton's mayor had a surprise for Bob. I thought it would be an excellent idea to name it after the guy that was responsible for making it. I was at another city council meeting and he gets a piece of paper up and he starts reading a proclamation that he's changing the name of the airport to the Robert Miller Regional Airport. And I said, uh, Mr. Mayor, don't you realize you have to be dead before you get the, an airport named after you? <laughs> Bob's not a boastful guy. He doesn't, doesn't toot his own horn, so somebody has to do it for him. And inside one of those hangars, you can find another of Bob's passions, 
This is a plain old Cessna 172. I didn't build any part of that. He's built a small fleet of planes by hand. If I want to go fast and sit in a tight cockpit, this is it. If I want to see the world upside down, there's a pit special over there. I enjoy pulling a few G's now and again. Each plane Bob built attracts curious pilots. I've had two instances where pilots from the World War II German Air Force have come here to look at this because they've seen it in magazines. And one of those guys came along and went like this because he expected to see exhaust stains on his finger. This one? Bob's using this to train the next generation of pilots. To date, he's flown more than 730 Young Eagle flights. To control an airline doesn't require a lot of this, it requires a lot of this. More than 700 flights with more than 700 students. But one pilot still stands above the rest, Bob's son. It was so early in his life that he couldn't see, see over the instrument panel. So he had to open the doors on the side and hang his head out and fly like this. He is a natural in the cockpit. We've actually flown together, one in each seat. He works for Delta. I always joked with him about, I tried to raise him right, but he went to Delta anyway. Bob Miller has always been a man with a decidedly pragmatic eye toward the sky. But even Bob couldn't imagine the impact he'd have on North Dakota aviation. I didn't have to struggle through high school and college figuring out what I wanted to prepare myself for, because I knew what I wanted to do. With his 2007 induction into the North Dakota Aviation Hall of Fame, Robert Miller's reputation as a pioneer is secure. But he's much too modest to ever mention that. Stresses of all kinds disappear when the wheels come off the ground and you concentrate on flying itself. I feel like I'm home. I've enjoyed every minute of it.